Hello folks, Chad Stanton here, a professional woodworker of almost 25 years, sharing my experiences with you. So besides doing work here in the shop, I'm slowly, emphasis on slowly, been working on a joint stool. Now I've decided to do it using nothing but hand tools. So I've already previously have done uh, the legs, I've made the mortises and the tenons. Now if you haven't seen those videos, not to worry, I have links below in the description. So in this video, I've decided to show you how I'm going to take the apron, which is just kind of plain looking, and I've decided I'm going to dress it up a little bit with this profile. This is commonly what they call a Cupid's bow. Now you're probably thinking, well there's not much to that Chad, you could just cut that out on the bandsaw, but remember, I'm not using power tools. So then you're like, okay Chad, well just, uh, you know, you could use a, a coping saw or even a bow saw. And you're right, you could, but I want to show you another method for cutting this out. Now I do want to say prior to actually cutting it out, you do have to make yourself a template of the Cupid's bow. And to make this, there's actually some geometry involved, and I've decided to do a separate video on this because it's a little bit in-depth. But right now, let's just skip this part of it and get right to cutting it out. So I'll take this apron, this is the longer one, and I have my template uh, cut out on some thicker uh, paper. And I'm going to place it on here and just trace it around and I want to do this on both sides so the first thing I want to do is um, transfer a couple of points over so um, where the tip of this comes I'm going to transfer a line going over and where the curve of this is I'm going to transfer that line over as well so I went back in and uh, trace the lines a little bit darker so it's easier for you to see and also too you can see where I used uh, my square to bring these marks across on it so now when I flip this over I also want to make sure that I flip over my template too so it may not be a bad idea to put like an X or something on it so you know the one side from the other but this is so that when I cut this out, any maybe slight imperfection that I have will also hopefully, hopefully get transferred to the other side. So once again, I'm, I'm looking to make sure that my, my marks line up with my template and then I'll just uh, uh, trace it out again. Right now I have the piece in my pattern maker's vise. Uh, I like this vise, it's, it's a little bit taller uh, up off of my bench. And the first thing I want to do is I want to make a, a few cuts on this. So I want to cut this one down. And because I'm not very good with the saw, one of the tips I like to do to help me out is I'm going to uh, make this line uh, vertical in my vise. That's going to hopefully help me uh, saw straight down. And the second tip that I like to, to do is, uh, you've probably seen me use this a lot. This is my uh, flex cut chip carving knife. Uh, use it all the time, worth every penny, really reasonable. And what I'll do is I'm going to uh, sink the, the knife in. And then on the waist side, I'm going to pull out a little chip. Uh, that's a nice place for my saw to start. In case you're wondering, this is my uh, PAX tenon cutting saw. Uh, any of the tools that I'm uh, using, I'll have listed as a highlight in the description box below. But there's also a link over to my website that uh, shows all the tools that I use regularly in the shop. So now I'm going to try and saw down on that line. Okay. Now I'm going to rotate it the other way, get this vertical, and I'll do the same thing. I'm going to saw down on this. 
So after I've made these cuts here, uh, what I did was I sawed down uh, somewhere, somewhere in the middle of this. I just eyeballed it. I saw it down, but not quite all the way to my line. Let me zoom in real close and show you. You can see I'm just shy of that line. Uh, there's a reason for that. I'll explain in a little bit. I removed the apron from the pattern maker's vise on the end of the bench, and I'm going to use this homemade style vise uh, here. Uh, this was a video I did a couple of years ago. It's how to make two simple vices for your bench. Uh, both are under $20. So this is just one of those wooden parallel jaw uh, clamps. And then I clamped it to uh, the bench itself. Uh, so this makes a fantastic vise. It's going to hold my piece in there, tighten it up so it's not going to move around. But best of all, it's setting firmly on the top of the workbench. And why is that? Well, we're going to be doing some hammering. Eh, not really hard hammering, but I'm going to remove this material uh, just by using a chisel. Now, uh, once again, you've heard me talk about it before. These are the Irwin chisels. Uh, I think these are fantastic chisels because they hold a razor sharp edge. They hold the edge for a long time before getting dull. And best of all, the price on these, well, you just can't beat it. All right, so let me zoom in tighter now and show you the method and technique that I'm going to use to remove the wood. So the first section I'm going to remove out is this part of it here. Now, uh, keep in mind that you're looking at this side of the apron and my lines drawn on it, but where I'm standing, I'm actually looking on the back side. So we'll find out how close uh, my template tracing uh, transferred from side to side. Okay, so the first thing I want to do with my chisel is I want to start with the bevel facing up. And I'm going to uh, slowly tap down into wood up to that kerf line. As you can see, this is removing a lot of wood fast, but it's going just in a straight line. So we still have that curve to deal with. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the chisel over so the bevel is facing down. And what that's going to allow me to do is right back here on the bevel uh, where I'm using that as a fulcrum. So what that means is I'm going to be pivoting on, on that point of the, the chisel. I'm going to, and that's going to allow me to, if I lift it up, it's going to allow me to uh, dig in. But if I think I'm starting to get too close to the line, I can just lean back a little and it'll work its way out. It, it's a really neat uh, technique. And you can see me moving it back and forth, right, as I'm steering it down in there. So I'm getting pretty close to my line there. I can keep tapping it, or you can actually use the chisel and kind of scoop the material out. Your chisels have to be really sharp to do this. So this is where I want to point out why I didn't saw all the way down to the pencil line. So I held it up shy because if I went to the pencil line or past it, uh, sometimes that saw kerf is deeper than I want and I won't have a smooth curve going and I'm going to you know, try and keep digging down to remove that saw kerf line and then I don't have a graceful line anymore. So by holding it a little shy, 
I can um, make this nice and smooth. Okay, now I'm going to uh, start working, doing the same thing, going the opposite direction. I'm going to start. I'm going to start by working um, over overhand like this, but I might have to turn it around in the vise uh, for me to actually be more comfortable in because I'm right-handed. So, anyways, let's see. Let's see what we get here. All right, this is getting a little difficult for me, so I'm going to turn it around in the vise and essentially just keep doing the same thing uh, that, that you saw me do on, on the first half. All right, so I want to point something out as I'm as I'm scooping down here. Once you get to that middle, don't try uh, scooping up because you're going against the grain in that point. So you can see this is starting to tear out from from the grain from this direction. So, so once again, I'll flip this around and come back in. And see, see once again, I'm just past center, so now it's starting to tear out. So this is, this is where it gets a little fussy, and if you have, again, you need razor-sharp chisels for this, and I've, I've done some videos on, on sharpening if you're curious. Um, but you'll notice, too, I'm kind of doing like a slicing action going across it. And that helps, helps me take a really small shaving out of there. I have a little bit to go. You can still see my pencil line, but the, the shape is looking nice. So I'm going to work on this just a little bit more. And then when we move to this part, uh, there's a slightly different uh, technique. I spent a little bit more time on this uh, smoothing it out, digging down into it. And I want to share a little tip with you. I thought I had it perfect down to my pencil line. It may be just a little bit of the pencil line remains. So what I suggest you do is erase any remains of your pencil line on there and that will reveal the true shape. So your eye gets fooled into looking at the curve of the pencil line versus the actual curve of the wood. And if you'll notice, right in this area here, uh, it looks a little flat, just a little bit flat. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back and, and scoop some of that out. I'll, I'll work that out. But for now, let's, let's just move up to here. So I want to share something with you. I'm going to be putting on this uh, Kevlar glove. This glove is mostly used for people that are, are doing carvings and they're holding it in their hand. Uh, that you, you don't want that knife to slip from the wood and cut you, so uh, this Kevlar glove prevents that. Now, just with that being said, um, it doesn't mean that you're, if you're using a small sharp knife that you can't still poke yourself because it will poke through, but it won't cut through, if that makes sense. Now, why am I using this? Well, because I took my chisels, and I'm not sure if you can see it, but I modified them. I, uh, I sharpened and ground the edges down. This is for when I use, my, use them as dovetails. Uh, it gets in really tight into the sockets uh, on, on the dovetail. So that edge is kind of sharp, so I'm, I'm putting the glove on because I'm going to be gripping, 
I'm going to be gripping my chisel like this. And uh, I, I don't want those. I don't want those edges cutting into me. Okay. So for the most part, <laughs> you don't have to worry about this glove unless you modified your chisel. So once again, uh, to remove this material out, I'm starting with the the bevel up. Now, I have to be real careful as I remove this wood. I don't want to hit it too hard because I don't want to fracture or break the tip off of my Cupid's bow here. So make sure you tap and go real slow when you get to that point. Now I still, as you can see, I still have to, to get in a little bit deeper. So that's where I'm going to, instead of tapping, I'm just going to work it with my hand. And by, by wiggling it back and forth, what it's doing is doing small little shearing cuts from side to side. I'm getting there, but what I really want to focus on at this point is uh, this is supposed to be smooth and round, and as you can see, it, it comes up and it's flat and then down again. So what I'm going to do is just keep shearing across it. Now, you can't see here, but I have my, my wrist uh, down on this, this vise here. My, my forearm is laying flat. and I'm just shearing across it now to roll this edge over. Again, razor sharp tools are required for this. So that's a much smoother one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish working down in this little valley here. I can still see my pencil line. And then I'm going to turn it around in the vise. And I'll show you. I'm just going to smooth that one out then. looks pretty good. Um, like I said, I'm going to turn this around in the vise now and do that. I took a little bit more time in fussing with the chisel to get the flat spots to transfer over into a nice smooth curve here. Now this is a technique that takes some practice, uh, but the nice thing about this is instead of using a handsaw where you're going to have those sharp or uh, rough uh, jagged cuts, uh, this is so smooth technically I don't even have to do any sanding on it. Now because it is a technique that takes some practice, uh, you might want to use a little rasp that will help you uh, transfer the flats to the curves. But again, even if you use this, I would still go back in with your chisel and remove a really f small fine shaving uh, again so you leave it nice and smooth. And there you go. That's how I made the Cupid bow for the aprons on the joint stool. Now in the next episode, as I mentioned before, I'm going to show you the geometry for the layout for making a Cupid's bow. And I think this is really important because if you try to freehand this 
well, it may not look so smooth and fluid. So learning the steps to the geometry is really going to bring your woodworking to another level. And then after the geometry video, I'm going to be working on the lower stretchers for the joint stool. Now, I decided to um, add a profile to the stretcher. And you can't probably see it from there, but there's a slight curve on this stretcher. And it just makes it a nice little detail for the overall look. And it's a pretty cool technique. So I'm going to share that with you also in an upcoming video. If you're enjoying this episode and are learning something from it, well, I would ask if you could help me out by kindly hitting on that thanks tab and donating towards the show. Now, if you're not able to donate, I totally understand. You could still help me out by liking, commenting, and sharing this video because it really does help me with my YouTube channel. Don't forget you can join me on Instagram and Facebook and follow what the jobs and projects that I'm doing here in the shop. Also, too, I have the Facebook group page called What Are You Doing? where you can show off what you're making in your place. Don't forget I offer a free monthly newsletter where I have contributors from all over the world sharing their knowledge of woodworking with you. And as always, if you are having a problem in your shop and would like some help, well, feel free to email me at woodshopintime at gmail.com because my whole purpose is to make you a better woodworker. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, keep on dancing.